Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. This is a video all about weeping trees, weeping ornamental trees. Uh, I have not included uh, cherry trees or weeping willows or weeping katsuras or lots of other things that I've actually covered on this channel over the years. These are 10 that are uh, pretty interesting. Those other three will show up in other videos in the future. I have tons of photos of uh, different weeping trees that I've taken over the years. And I think some of these are pretty interesting. Some of them are conifers. Some of them are more for the South uh, regions. And then some of them, pretty much everybody watching can grow or even lean toward uh, colder areas of the country. So let's jump right in. I'm actually gonna include two Cedrus Deodoras in this video. This first one is Cedrus Deodora pendula. Uh, just an absolutely beautiful uh, weeping conifer. The photos that you're seeing here are actually in a park shaded space at the Ralston Arboretum. Uh, actually, probably don't get, get, this one gets very little direct sun. It will, take, it will take absolute full sun, but I've always been amazed at this one, how well it's done in park shade. Uh, this one is pretty easy uh, to you know stake up to the height that you want to keep it i think this one in the garden is probably seven eight feet tall something like that and then it's weeping all the way down to the ground and you can cut it up off the ground if you want to you can see where there's kind of a little bit of a natural tunnel created in this one that's absolutely something you could do with cedrus deodora uh, pendula would be to grow it on one side of a pathway and then train it to the other side of the pathway to create a tunnel, basically create some rooms uh, in your garden space. But that's uh, Cedrus Deodora pendula, which is, Cedrus Deodora is one of the true cedars. I thought this one would be super interesting to include. Uh, this is a Diosporus, a uh, Diosporus virginiana. This is our native persimmon. Uh, this is a weeping form called magic fountain. Uh, it will fruit. Uh, and it's absolutely a beautiful plant. These are, again, our photos uh, from the Ralston Arboretum. It has beautiful foliage. These photos were taken the last week of August on a particularly hot summer. And you can see how great the foliage actually looks. It's got a little burn on a leaf here or there, but overall just looks amazing. This tree is probably, I guess, I'm going to say 10 feet tall, something like that, and weeping basically uh, back down to the ground. But I thought a native fruit tree. A weeping form of a native fruit tree would be super interesting to include in this video. And if you can find this, find this variety, this is a tremendous ornamental plant uh, with a long lifespan and really very little maintenance. This is the other Cedrus Deodora. This was feeling blue. Main difference with this one is if you don't stake it, it's almost more of a, a small weeping shrub. Uh, and this is one at the, at the Ralston that's about, and it's the same, the, similar photos if I showed you from my house as well. But this thing can be staked and basically create the same type of thing that you saw on Pendulo where you could create a window into it. You can let this thing get 15 feet wide if you wanted to. It won't get any taller than basically what you've staked it. Uh, so really interesting habit. And it's definitely got more of a blue hue uh, than Pendula does. And, uh, and I think you'd see it if we, you know, if they were side by side, you would see that this one has quite a bit more of that blue coloration in it. Um, I think Pendula uh, lends itself toward easier staking, easier uh, to overall shape and work with, uh, but Feeling Blue is definitely worth it because of this really great blue foliage. This is one of my favorite weeping trees over at the Ralston. This is Olmus Minor Pendula. This is the weeping smoothleaf elm. Uh, just an absolutely beautiful plant. Uh, has an incredible structure on the inside of it. I love to get on the inside of these uh, weeping trees and, and see the habit, see how the light comes through them, uh, see how these things move in the wind. You can see the foliage is um, a little different than we'd see uh, on some other uh, elm species. Uh, very interesting bark on this one, and you can see the overall habit just really stunningly beautiful tree. It's in, an, in a pretty high profile traffic uh, path area along the, in, in the Ralston. It just always shines in that garden. This is Omus Minor Pendula or Weeping Smoothleaf Elm. This will be my controversial addition to this video. This is a weeping mimosa and mimosas uh, are great at producing seeds. They're one of those pea family plants and they all seem to be just fantastic at producing seed, including our native red bud, which can produce unbelievable amounts of seed. 
uh, every single year that are all seem to be viable. But this weeping form of mimosa is just absolutely stunning. The structure of this tree uh, just blows me away. The beautiful pink flowers on it. There's a, a chocolate version of this. It has a darker, darker foliage, darker uh, flower on it. Uh, if you're interested, and that one's you know been out on the market for a long time and it's probably pretty widely available. This is the uh, the green uh, foliage form, uh, and you can see these seed pods on it. How how good again the, uh, that all these pea family things are at making making great seeds. The interior structure of this plant is just stunning. It's beautiful. It's, it, this is one of those focal point plants that if you add to your garden will just, you know, it's unbelievable. If you wanted to, you could go out and, you know, pick some of those seeds off or, you know, make sure that um, you're getting up any that uh, try to germinate in your garden. But again, again, this will be the controversial one because again, mimosas are, uh, you know, can be uh, invasive. Unfortunately, they're just out there now. I mean, it's part of our native environment. I mean, if you go up and down the interstate, there's no way we're ever gonna get rid of all those mimosas that are growing, you know, on the side of the roads. And uh, people do love them. There's no question that mimosas are near the top of people's list for summer flowering trees. And this weeping form is just gorgeous. This is one of my favorite plants at the Ralston Arboretum. This is a weeping taxodium. Uh, was much, much smaller years ago when I started visiting uh, the garden and it's really come into its own and taken up a very large space and a little curve on a sidewalk. Uh, tree is really stunningly beautiful. Again, I love getting into the center of these weeping trees and seeing how the light comes through them. You know, how the bark looks, you know, just the structure of these weeping trees is absolutely amazing. And again, it has that, you see that fern-like foliage that we that we see on taxodiums and you can get up close to it and touch it. It's all, you know, it's super soft to the touch. Uh, just a tremendous, you know, you know, you know, taxodiums get gigantic. Most taxodiums do. And so this weeping version would give you the opportunity to grow a taxodium in your garden. Uh, and, you know, we think about them as, you know, growing along rivers and streams and ponds and that kind of thing. This one is in a very dry space at the Ralston Arboretum on, on a slight mound really, has no problem whatsoever, uh, you know, in dry conditions as well. But what an addition this would be to any ornamental garden. I can't do a weeping tree video without talking about the weeping red buds. And a lot of these are Denny Warner's uh, weeping red buds. You guys have, have followed my channel, know that I have a Golden Falls red bud at my house beautiful gold foliage weeping one. And then Ruby Falls is a purple leafed form. They're just plain green forms if you want, but I'm paying homage in this one to Whitewater, which has this Amer uh, incredible variegation, which shows up as pink and white. Uh, this is, these photos are taken toward the end of summer. So this is the least amount of variegation you would have seen on it all season. When it leaves out in the spring, it's quite a bit brighter than this. Uh, stunningly, stunningly beautiful plant. Nothing's been done to this one. Uh, it just, this is how it grows. It was staked to this height and now it, every limb just falls down to the ground. You can go in and lift up the skirt a bit, you know, be, you know, prune them up three, four feet off the ground and they'll just, you know, just start growing right back toward the ground. But any of these weeping red buds are great additions to the ornamental garden. This has always been an interesting one to me. This is a weeping thornless honey locust. Uh, this one is at the Ralston. There's some construction going on right behind it over there, as you can tell. This one has seen better days. Uh, it's been, had some pruning done to it uh, in recent years, uh, but it has this just absolutely magical trunk on it. It has the, the honey locust foliage that you would expect, uh, which is just beautiful. This thing just is so contorted and gnarly at this point. Uh, the thing about these weeping trees is the older they get, the more interesting they get. Maybe part of it dies. Maybe you have to cut back some part of it. You know, for whatever reason, they actually become more interesting even when they have problems in the future. And this one has always been a standout uh, in this garden just because every time I walk up to it, it's just so neat. Uh, this variety is called Emerald Cascade, uh, if you can locate it. And this one's been in the garden for a long time, uh, you could, as you can tell by the, uh, the diameter uh, on this trunk. A lot of the photos I'm using in this video are ones that I've taken over at the Ralston either this year or in other years. Uh, they have a great collection of upright narrow trees, uh, weeping trees, uh, a lot of the things that were originally planted uh, on this site. It's a great evaluation place for trees over some period of time. Uh, and there are tons of weeping Japanese maples uh, in the collection. And 
uh, definitely worth a visit there or any place where you can see lots of different uh, weeping Japanese maples. Uh, but I'm just, here's a few photos. I just didn't feel like I could do a weeping uh, tree video without including uh, weeping Japanese maples, which you can get, you know, depending on the height of the graft will a lot of times depend on the height of the tree. So if they're grafted up higher, you're going to have more of a, you know, six or seven foot tree where it's weeping down to the ground. And frequently if they're grafted really low, they end up, you know, very low and shrubby uh, looking without any additional staking uh, on them. But green foliage varieties, pink, red, yellow foliage varieties, uh, cut leaf varieties, uh, all kinds of interesting things, great fall color, but you know, it's, you know, we can't have a weeping tree video without talking about Japanese maples. Number 10 in this list of great weeping ornamental trees. This is a larger growing one, probably the largest growing one I have in this video. This is a Chinese hackberry and uh, it's absolutely stunningly beautiful. It's uh, Green Cascade uh, is this variety. This is another set of photos that was taken over at the Ralston. Incredible structure uh, on this tree with limbs that are weeping down in all direction. There's a staircase that runs under it. Uh, there's a wall on one side of it where the limbs just weep down uh, next to the wall. It's one of my all-time favorite trees uh, at the Ralston Arboretum. They're beautiful you know, almost very smooth bark uh, on these ha on these hackberries. Uh, you know, I've tried to show the bark on a lot of these trees because the bark becomes an inter really interesting part of these weeping trees, especially during the winter time when most of them, you know, lose their leaves. Uh, and, you know, that, that becomes a big part of it. But this is a very large weeping tree uh, and its stature uh, is absolutely incredible. It just shines in the space that it was put in. Uh, over at the Rawson Arboretum next to the uh, main building and uh, next to the little weeping uh, wall, uh, water wall that's there. Uh, beautiful foliage and beautiful habit. That's 10 of my favorite weeping ornamental trees. There are tons more and I'll do more of these videos in the future. Again, everybody watching, there's something from that collection uh, that you could uh, grow in your garden. Some of these things you know, when you get into weeping trees, grafted trees, interesting trees, you know, you may have to search a little far and wide. You may have to use mail order nursery, specialty nurseries uh, that are near you. Definitely your, your garden center, you know, probably be a good, um, you know, starting point to find out, you know, what weeping trees they have available. It tends to be weeping willows, weeping cherries, weeping red buds. You know, it, ten it tends to be a few go-tos, but there are lots and lots of other interesting weeping trees out there. Uh, to, uh, to explore and to see and add to your garden or find in gardens like the Ralston Arboretum and just enjoy them there uh, as much as you can uh, at your place. There's a $50 discount this month on my Learn to Garden video series over on my website, horttube.com. Use, uh, use code FALL50 uh, to get $50 off uh, during this month. You buy it once, you own it forever. I'm adding content to it all the time. Thanks for watching.